All right, I want to do a little quick little video here on the subject of speaking in tongues, kind of uh, as an add-on to uh, the video there that Brother Mac put out, uh, Random 331. And here, a couple years back, I had a copy of this thing here, the um, Witches book. This is an encyclopedia put out by witches. It's not written by Christians about witches or something. It's an actual witchcraft book. And I had it for a little while, and the Lord kind of convicted me and said, you know, you shouldn't have that thing in your collection, so I got rid of it. But I did photo scan some of the pages from it, and I thought this was very interesting here. It says, in modern Christian worship, the Pentecostal movement has revived interest in speaking in tongues and ecstatic communion with God. And I'm not going to read all this for sake of time. You can pause it and read it yourself. But it goes on down here to say, the congregation considered those who received the Spirit as blessed much like worshipers, the worshippers doing a voodooing rite, voodoo essentially, um, praise those who have been mounted by a god, and that's exactly what they do when they're demon possessed in voodoo rituals. They say, "Oh, they've been mounted by a god." Of course, lowercase g. It's a, it's a devil, is what it is. And uh, but it says here, earlier critics of such worship would have found the participants possessed. The largest group of Pentecostals in the United States is the Assemblies of God with thousands of members worldwide. That's page 206 of the Witches Encyclopedia. Here on page 319, it talks about the Louvre's possessions, and it talks about a um, case of mass demonic possession. And I apologize for some of this stuff in here because it's kind of uh, graphic, but it basically says here, on the promptings of Sister Madeline... Bavant, I guess 18 nuns were possessed. And by the way, you'll see that a lot. Uh, the news media will not talk about that very much, but there's a lot of occult, uh, satanic types of things going on within these uh, monasteries and convents and things. Um, a buddy of mine actually showed me a local newspaper article where they found a nun that was ritualistically sacrificed. And it was a very small little article and they didn't talk about it much. But anyhow, it goes on to here, and it says about uh, she was in a, she was uh, two clergymen um, took her to a witch's sabbat where she married the devil Dagon and committed horrible and obscene acts with him on the altar. And it says here, and this is what you need to understand if you're in this charismatic stuff. Dagon disturbed the peace of some of the other nuns as well, and all showed the classic signs of possession. This is a witch's book, okay? This is not a King James Bible Baptist, you know, book where they are attacking Pentecostals. This is witchcraft. Witches are actually writing this. And they said the classic signs of possession, contortions, unnatural body movements, glossiola, talking in unknown languages. That's what that means. Insults, blasphemies, and the appearance of strange wounds which just as suddenly vanished. Another thing that you'll see a lot in charismatic type churches is they'll talk about the stigmata. This mark appears on the hand, you know, kind of a bloody circle type of a thing. And they say, oh, you know, this is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. No, it isn't. It's a manifestation of being possessed with devils. Very, very evil stuff. Okay? So don't fall for that. Oh, by the way, very quickly here, I did save some pages out of the... Uh, which is encyclopedia here on page 185. It talks about the Kabbalah. That's a whole other thing. But look at this one, page 139. Well, that's a rather interesting uh, image there to have in the witches encyclopedia. But if you understand ancient Babylonian symbolism, the Queen of Heaven is what's depicted there, not the Virgin Mary. And notice, by the way, she has blonde hair. That's important, too. Okay, Semiramis, if you study the thing, had pure blonde hair. Mary didn't have blonde hair. Mary was a Jew. Okay, and you'll see this image appearing much the same, pretty much unchanged in Roman Catholicism. They'll have a blonde-haired Mary. All right, Mary didn't have blonde hair. The Queen of Heaven did. Just wanted to add that in there. But another source here, the uh, Occult ABC, What You Don't Know Can Hurt You, by Dr. Kurt E. Koch. 
and um, let me see. I got to look it up here quick. Page, okay, 206. Sorry about that. I should have had that ready. And here he is. He's got a whole section on speaking in tongues. And over here, he talks about this uh, pastor that he knew, calls him Brother Birch, and he says, Brother Birch has investigated 20 cases of tongues in Canada. 19 were demonic in nature. Okay, the one in one case, the person speaking in tongues said, you don't need to test my spirit. I bring about the speaking in tongues myself. So there are two types of modern day speaking in tongues. You have number one, you have demonic properly called devils, possessed with devils in the King James Version. And number two, you have fake, counterfeit. That's the only thing that's going to occur today. It's either of the devil or it's fake, period. What? But, you know, some people say, what was the purpose of speaking in tongues in the Bible? Well, let me show you quick. All right, found my Bible. Now let me show you exactly what tongues are for. And where did they sh first show up? Here you have Mark chapter 16. And we're going to look at, down here at verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And why is that? Verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Okay, now who did they confirm the word to? Who were the signs for? Well, go over to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews require the sign there. That's who the gift of tongues was given. It was given to the disciples, to the early Christians, to confirm the word to the Jews. They're the ones that required the signs of uh, the casting out devils and the speaking in other tongues and the healing and things like that. But you say, okay, well, how can you prove, you know, do you have the baptism, the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, John chapter 16, let's look down here at uh, verse 13. Here's the true manifestation of a spirit-filled Christian. And look at that. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. A spirit-filled Christian will have a love for the truth and an understanding of the truth. They won't fall for lies, okay? Yes, you can still be deceived as a Christian, but you aren't going to make it your lifelong habit of just being constantly deceived, and not only deceived, but deceiving other people. Now, a true Christian that has the Holy Spirit will have a love for the truth and an understanding of the truth. Don't fall for the tongues thing.